Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. This is Zenzo with Tozawa Tanks. In this video, I'm going to talk about my favorite small fish in the hobby and the fish that I get the most emails, DMs, and questions about. That fish is Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Now I don't expect you to memorize that name, it's quite the mouthful. They are often called multis for short and are also referred to as shellies due to the fact that they are a shell dwelling cichlid. What this means is that they have adapted to live in empty snail shells on the bottom of Lake Tanganyika, which is in Eastern Africa in the Rift Valley. So there are empty shells that have been discarded over the centuries, and they use these shells to brood, raise their fry, also known as baby fish, in these empty shells. At a maximum of about two inches, they're one of the smallest cichlids in the world. Other than size, they are mostly monomorphic, so it's really hard to tell females from males until they're full adults. And when they're full adults, sometimes you'll see some dimorphism where the males will be larger than the females. They're really an easy fish to keep if you have proper water parameters and are good at keeping fish and caring for your fish, as most cichlids are. They do not require a lot of space and can live in fish tanks as small as 10 gallons, although bigger is always better. They are very territorial, so they do need to have plenty of shells and hiding places to call their own. They prefer hard water with a higher pH as other fish do from Lake Tanganyika. Ideally, the, the pH should be between 8 and 9 on the scale, but they can be kept in waters of around 7.5. Keep in mind that a lot of the uh, shellies that are available in the U.S. market are um, born and raised uh, in our water, so sometimes they are exposed and uh, have been raised in waters of less than uh, 8 pH. They do need temperatures between 75 and 81 degrees as they are a tropical fish. Now if you are breeding, you will want to have warmer waters and they do better with a higher pH as far as breeding is concerned. One of the things that I've found is that they're really hard to find and purchase in many areas. Now in some parts of the country they can be readily found, you can find them in stores, you can find them in fish clubs, but a lot of times you just cannot find them in, in certain parts of the country. So I get a lot of questions about mine. Um, this uh, uh, colony that I have, I, uh, I've had for about three years. It started with eight fish, and now it's grown to dozens and dozens and dozens. I've probably sold 40 or 50 of them easily um, over the past year or so. So something that I am considering in the future is um, expanding my breeding program for the Shelleys and uh, making them available outside of my area because I'm only selling them locally currently. A few details about this tank. This is a 60 gallon aquarium, which means that it's four feet wide. It's essentially the same size as a 55 gallon aquarium, but a little bit taller. I do have that custom background that I made. Um, I've talked about this before. Um, if you haven't heard about this, basically it's a um, background that I made using foam and concrete and um, installed it in here to uh, kind of have a custom fitting and kind of create that uh, rock background. As I shared, um, I originally started with eight of these shell dwellers. Um, I did order them online from a breeder that is no longer um, making fish available. And um, they were originally in a 16 gallon aquarium. And uh, after a while, I moved them to the 60 gallon setup. Um, they were spawning in the small tank as well. So if you do decide to keep these fish and you have a smaller aquarium, Maybe you have like a 10 gallon tank or a 20 long or something. They will breed and they will spawn if you, um, again, have the right uh, water parameters. As far as the water quality in this aquarium, um, I do a water change on a weekly basis for this tank, usually around 35 to 40% or so. Um, I do have high pH where I live, so the water does have um, uh, elevated pH levels and then I will add some um, salts and buffers just to kind of add some uh, dissolved solids. I do have aragonite as a substrate. So aragonite is a uh, substrate that uh, does really well for um, African cichlids and uh, they do like to dig. You can see some of the baby fry there, the baby fish um, there in the back if you look at those little dots. Um, they do like to dig quite a bit no matter how you set up the tank they will dig and change the setup. Um, there you can see the babies again. Um, they're kind of uh, hard to spot, they're so tiny. Um, 
but uh, lots of fun, lots of enjoyment uh, from these fish. There are some more babies again back there in the shell. So the babies can escape into the shell and uh, avoid any you know predation from other fish coming by. So um, they've done quite well. Um, I do keep this tank right around 80 degrees. I do have high pH. I've got the aragonite substrate. Lots of shells, lots of hiding places. They can hide under the rocks and in the rocks um, as well. So I do have some other tank mates in this, uh, in this aquarium. Um, you can see that I do have some nearite snails. Uh, they help to uh, kind of uh, clean the algae and just kind of uh, clean up any detritus that might be um, around um, and uh, they don't uh, harm the fish at all. And sometimes the fish will kind of chase them away. But uh, they uh, do very well with the snails. They don't bother the snails for the most part. And then in addition, you might have seen um, from some of the uh, wide shots, is I have some other fish, and those are the uh, Brichardi, the Neolamphalagus uh, Brichardi. And uh, there you can see a really beautiful fish, very elegant looking. They are also from Lake Tanganyika, so they require the same water parameters that the shell dwellers would require. Um, they do uh, spawn differently. They're like a substrate or rock spawner. And uh, I'm not sure if you can tell, but some of the smaller ones there, um, they were actually uh, fry. If you follow my Instagram um, page, you'll see uh, some posts that I've made in the past uh, showing these baby um, for shardy. But um, very beautiful, elegant fish. Um, just a great addition to this tank. Kind of what's happened in this aquarium is the Brichardi have kind of taken like one third of the tank as their own, as you can kind of see, and this is kind of their rocky area. And then the Shellies, the Multis, are on the other two thirds of the tank. And for the most part, they leave each other alone. Um, the Shell Dwellers don't go on the Brichardi side. The Brichardis will get chased away if they go over to um, the uh, Shell Dweller side. So again, the Shell Dwellers can be very territorial and aggressive towards fish larger than them. So that makes them a good fish to have with uh, other African cichlids, not Malawi cichlids, but other you know Tanganyikan cichlids that are a little bit larger because they can totally fend for themselves and chase away um, anyone that gets too close to their area. So um, these Brichardi are you know really beautiful. I do enjoy them. It's just kind of a different element of the tank that uh, I've enjoyed and I do like when my fish spawn and uh, create new life. It's really enjoyable. Um, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of sit in a chair right in front of this tank and just stare at it for you know a long time just you know, looking for new baby fish and uh, just enjoying everything. Now I am breeding this fish. Sometimes the fish that I sell will come directly from the display tank but this is a uh, little short clip of my um, overflow tank downstairs. In my breeding program downstairs, I don't use shells because it's impossible to get fish out of the shells because they go up into the spiral. So I use these little PVC elbows instead. So if you are interested in, um, you know, possibly, you know, purchasing some fish, I would love to read your comments down below. I have had, um, I have made these fish available locally. I have not shipped any fish just because of the. Uh, challenges with logistics and everything but I would love to read in the comments down below if that is something that uh, you would consider um, you know for uh, locating and purchasing purchasing uh, these fish for yourself so I'll just kind of be quiet here for the next uh, minute or two and uh, just kind of let you enjoy these beautiful fish um, the way that I get to enjoy them um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up I really do appreciate you guys watching if you made it this far um, the thumbs up, believe it or not, really do help the channel and uh, YouTube does reward um, channels such as mine for getting lots of likes. So if you don't mind, give it a like and uh, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button so you can uh, see more about this tank in the future as well as other aquariums. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.